Okay, so hopefully you'll have had a go at that. And um, the uh, the answer on the board, I'm not going to run through these now. Okay, but I'll, uh, I'll ask your teacher to collect in your sheets and I will look through them for you. Okay, so um, next we need to consider the characteristics of an image and whether or not an image is suitable for run length encoding to be applied to it. This image lends itself really well to run length encoding. Um, if we if we look at the data that we are actually storing, okay, we've only got um, we've got, we've got long runs of ones, we've got long runs of zeros. Now, that's because we've just got one bit color. Okay, we've only got two colors to represent, so the chances are we're, we're going to have long runs of either. This wouldn't be um, the case with the photograph. Okay, now when you consider the photographs that you have taken on your phones or that you've seen, it's unlikely that you are going to get large blocks of exactly the same color. Okay, if we're using a greater range of colors, which photographs do, we're going to have to store um, more bits and a greater level of detail. And the runs that we're storing are not going to be as long. Okay, we're not going to have necessarily four to two um, pixels at the same color. Okay, so what I would like you to look at now. Okay, we've got a 32 byte file, it's in its original format. Um, I would like you to have a go at calculating the size of the compressed file in terms of the number of bytes. That we would have to use. You've got the binary that we're going to have to store. You've got that in the table in your worksheet. Um, you need to remember that there are eight bits in a byte. So I'd like to have a go at calculating the compressed file size. If your teacher could pause the video for a few minutes and let you have a go at that, please. Okay, so hopefully you've had a go at that. Um, now, assuming that we're using um, six bits for for each run, which we are, we would need 18 bytes in order to store the compressed version of the image. Okay, so we've got a reduction of um, 14 bytes, which is fairly significant on a 32 byte file. However, we would need to store um, some metadata. So metadata, for those of you who don't know, is it's, it's data about the file or data about data. So we would have to store things like the color depth, um, which is the number of bits that we're using to represent the color. Um, we would have to store details about the, uh, the resolution and so on. It's all the, all the data that the computer is going to need to know in order for the um, computer to recreate the image. Okay, so that would also be needed to store to be stored alongside the binary data itself. Um, so the icon, uh, I did mention, I think I mentioned one bit color before, the icon that we've been looking at is referred to as one bit color because we're using a single bit to represent um, each pixel's color. However, most photographs that we use now, they, um, they're they stored using 24 bit color, which is referred to as true color. So just consider that phrase 24 bit color, just for a minute and what do you think that actually refers to? Well, we use, um, we can using red, green, and blue. We can recreate any color. So, twenty-four bit color uses eight bits to store the amount of red that a particular pixel um, uses. The amount of uh, eight bits for the amount of blue and eight bits for the amount of green. So, rather than just having a single binary bit to represent each pixel, we would have to use twenty-four bits of data to represent every pixel. So obviously, in terms of file size, that's going to result in a significantly larger file. Right, your um, your next task. I've got on the screen for you a um, star icon. Using the, uh, the grid that you've got in your worksheet, I would like you to try and create me the one bit uh, representation of this star um, using just as we were doing before, using ones and zeros to represent the, uh, the white space and the black space. I would then like you 
to have a go at calculating what the um, the run length encoded file size of this image would be, and then try to establish the how much the file was compressed as a percentage of the original file. So if your teacher could pause the video for about 10 minutes, we have a go at that, please. And hopefully you've now had a go at that. If we refer back to the question from the beginning, okay, the question was, is run length encoding a suitable compression algorithm for the storage of photographs? Hopefully, okay, now able to answer that. Um, run length encoding is suitable for um, very simple images like the icon that we use, where we've got large, long runs of the same colour. It would not be suitable, or not as suitable, for the storage of photographs. Okay, and hopefully that will be clear from uh, from the previous slides. Okay, we've got we don't have the same level of blocks of colour, um, and therefore we don't have the same length of runs, therefore the amount of compression we can apply is going to be reduced. Okay. So hopefully that's uh, that's been a bit of an insight into the types of things that we do in computer science. Okay, this is obviously just a very short taster. Um, if you would like any more information, then my email address is on the screen. You can, uh, you can email me and I'll get back to you and hopefully answer any questions that you might have. And if you want to look at the course in a little bit more depth, um, the example that we use is OCR. So it's just OCR A-level computer science. The course code is um, H046 on the screen for the AS. So the AS is H046 and H146 for the A-level course. So you can go on and you can have a look at the specifications and get a bit more information about what you actually um, what you would actually study okay so i hope that's been useful any questions please get in touch sorry just to correct that the a level course is h446 not h146